Hi, welcome back to the shop. Well, last November, my wife's family got together and we drew names out of a hat to figure out who was going to purchase Christmas presents for who. And I drew my father-in-law's name. And he asked for a shelf uh, that would span across the top of a new entertainment center that they just purchased for their new house. And so that's what we're going to be working on today. As you can see in these highly technical drawings here, uh, we're going to be building, we have two towers and a little uh, entertainment center down below, and we're going to build a shelf that will bridge across these two towers and kind of tie everything together. I'm also going to be putting in a couple of puck lights in the tower that will shine down as well. Uh, it's going to be made out of red oak. I got all the materials at one of the local big box stores. The front molding is going to be the only real difficult portion of this project. So as you can see, uh, we have a number of different dimensions that we're going to be cutting on this front piece to make everything fit. We're going to do the front's going to be out of solid red oak as well as the sides. Uh, probably the back will be plywood and then I'm going to put a couple of internal stringers across here across here to make sure everything stays stable and straight. Here is that front molding piece. Uh, I've gone ahead and taken some measurements and laid it out. Luckily everything is on 45s here so this shouldn't be too difficult. Let's go ahead head over to the saw and get started. So I've already cut a sample uh, piece and verified that it does match the existing molding. I've gone ahead and have my saw tilted up at a 45 degree angle. Uh, I have the oak here. We're going to go ahead and make our first cut and then we'll start laying things out. One of the challenges of working in Studio G here is that uh, I, the placement of the saw is such that it gives me maximum space. So, however, uh, to make cut longer boards, say more than two or three feet, I have to open the outside door. So on this first face, they're both 45s, but one is going to be 5 eighths of an inch long and the other is going to, only going to be 3 eighths of an inch long. So I'm going to go ahead and mark off 5 eighths. And I'll just bring that over around the edge with the square. So the second face should be 3 eighths of an inch. We can also double check that with our sample. And that looks good. Now we'll go set up the saw and make the cut. And make our final cuts on the, uh, on the molding. Uh, to do this, when I made the sample, I went ahead and put a stop block on the fence here so I can just bring that up and I know that when I lock that in place, I will be in the exact spot. I'll simply have to cut one side, turn it over, cut the other side, and I should have uh, perfect molding. I want to take a second here. As you can see, I wasn't able to complete the cut. Um, if you look, you can see this saw had an incredible amount of bind in it. I didn't get that in the previous piece I cut, uh, and I thought this piece might be okay, but uh, it isn't. So what I'm probably going to have to do is actually uh, rip off a smaller piece of this, or a vertical strip of this, and then I can go back and, and make the cut that I need to make. But uh, right now, uh, it won't cut the way, it, the way I'd like it to.
We're going to start working on the bottom piece and the back piece now. I'm going to go ahead and make these rabbits that will appear in the back here to receive the top and for the, the back to be received into the bottom. We're ready to make the final cut to complete the rabbit in the bottom uh, on the inside. And now I have a straight edge clamped to my, my piece, my work piece, and I have a 5 8 collar with a half inch straight cutting bit. We're going to go ahead and cut the 45 degree angle along this top piece here just along the front and then we'll cut it to width on the table saw. To do this I've set up a straight edge along the front of my top and I've tipped my circular saw to a 45 degree angle. Just run that across there. We're going to go ahead and trim everything to the proper length now. The larger pieces I'll do just using a straight edge. The smaller pieces I'll use a crosscut sled on the table saw. I now have all the pieces cut to length and I'm going to go ahead and start the assembly. I'm going to use glue and screws to assemble this and to keep the joint or the, the fasteners hidden from view, I'm going to go ahead and use pocket joinery on this. We're going to go ahead and start assembling here and I'm going to pay very close attention to my alignment between the front board and the plywood on the back. Uh, I want to make sure that I don't expose that layer of veneer on the plywood so that I'd have to sand that down to match. Uh, it would be easier to sand the uh, front board because it's solid wood. I want to make sure I get everything just lined up just perfect here. I've gone ahead and attached the front using pocket screws and glue and then I went and filled the pocket holes with plugs. Now I'm going to attach the back using glue and some finishing nails. Now that we have the front and the back installed, I'm going to go ahead and cut the, the boards for the internal framework uh, inside the shell. We can now go ahead and attach the pieces. I'm just going to use a little bit of glue and some brads initially, and I'll follow that up with a few screws.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and install some internal structure here, and this is for the compartment that will be kind of hidden in the top. And it's just going to be a couple of cross braces. Um, once again, just a little bit of glue and a few brads. I've gone ahead and marked for the width of the top and now I'm just going to set up a straight edge on it here and I'll cut it with a circular saw. That's it for this episode. Next time, we'll finish fitting the top, make the cutouts, install the lights, and get it ready for finish. Until then, keep it level, plumb, and square. <laughs>